showtime. All right, we are live and it looks like we have folks popping in the room. So as always, give us a few seconds, everybody, as we allow everybody to get through the virtual door. I see a lot of familiar names this morning. Good morning, everyone. Give us about 15 seconds and we'll get, we'll get started once we get everybody here with us. All right, looks like we still have a couple more people coming in this morning, but it's slowing down. So I think we can get going, Commissioner. Thank you, Michelle. Good morning, everyone. I, I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, welcome to our monthly Wellington Waverly Buckeye Zoom community conversation. Um, in a moment, I'll turn it over to Michelle, but today we're, we're pleased that we have as our featured guest, Wayne Penny. Dwayne Penny, and he is our new, newly minted uh, Solid Waste Department Director. And having him here, he'll you know, talk about himself and give an update on the, on the landfill and, and our, our um, Solid Waste Master Plan. So that's the intent. And then after that, I'm happy to give you any updates that you're interested in learning about and answer your questions as best as I can. I did wanna mention before I turn it over to Michelle, with, just to give us a little bit about uh, Zoom protocol for you know, to make it easier for folks to participate. I wanted to mention that at the last meeting, I think it was the Wellington Fire Chief, Gary Green, that asked about a presentation on, on demographics. And we weren't able to quite get it together, but at our next meeting, uh, which is April 1st, April Fool's Day, um, uh, we will have Jacob Castillo, who is the director of our Economic and Workforce Development Department. And he will be prepared to uh, provide folks with economic health data, you know, some population and demographic data. So I just wanted folks to know that. Michelle, would you uh, enlighten us about Zoom? Thank you, Commissioner. Good morning, everybody. And please forgive me, I have a little frog in my throat this morning. Hopefully it is just allergies and not something more serious. I'm feeling okay though. But I, most of these names are familiar to me. So I think most of you guys know how to use Zoom at this point. Um, with our meetings, but just a real quick reminder, if you have questions at any point, um, you're feel free to put them in the Q&A box down below. Um, that's how we chat with each other um, during these meetings. Or if you wanna actually talk with us, you guys know how to raise your hand. Um, there should be a little raise your hand button down below. Please feel free to raise your hand so we can chat a little bit and I'll walk you through getting yourself unmuted once we get to that point. Um, other than that, we might use the chat box to send out some links. So keep an eye on the chat box for some links and um, look forward to talking to everyone this morning. Thanks, Commissioner. Thanks, Michelle. Th thank you very much. And I just wanna take a moment to acknowledge, I, I see at least as far as an attendees, at this point we have eight, and one of them is Rebecca, Rebecca Kinney, one of the Wellington tr t Town Trustees. So I, I certainly uh, want to acknowledge that and appreciate your participation in these, in these meetings. And I think actually coming up, I'm, I forget exactly when, We've scheduled a, um, a meeting between the commissioners and the Wellington Town Trustees, you know, to get to know each other better and to build our relationships. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Dwayne Penny. I think he has a couple of slides to show, but it would be really great to tell us about yourself and your background and who you are as a, a solid waste uh, person and also as a human being, perhaps that's important. And uh, welcome to the team. Well, thank you, Commissioner. Good morning, everyone. And, and uh, Commissioner, thank you for inviting me to, to the meeting this morning and Michelle. Um, uh, my name is Dwayne Penny and I am the Solid Waste Director for Larimer County. And I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I've been in the industry, um, construction and solid waste industry for 40 years. I raised my family in Greeley and uh, my kids are off and running. I guess they're not kids anymore. I have grandkids. Um, and so um, pretty much between Colorado Springs and uh, Port Collins has been my career. I've built a lot of highways, interstates, and I also was a general manager for a number of years managing the larger landfills uh, in Colorado for BFI and Allied Waste. And during my time, I also managed and constructed transfer stations 
recycling facilities and um, quite a bit of construction on infrastructure for those types of facilities. And so um, that's been pretty much my entire career. And I'm really excited to be on board with Larimer County. And um, I certainly like to get to know people. Um, and I'm looking forward to uh, getting to know you folks in Wellington and Waverly. And I, I did prepare a few slides and I will. Michelle, is it okay if I go ahead and share my screen? Absolutely, go ahead. Okay. Can you see the PowerPoint, Michelle? Not yet. Sometimes once you hit share screen, you got to kind of pick which one you want to share. Okay, let me try it one more time. You bet. We'll get oh. through it. Don't worry. Yes. Oh, there, there we go. There we go. Now I can open my yep. PowerPoint. Okay. Well, now we don't, we still don't see the PowerPoint. We see your screen, but not the PowerPoint. How about now, Michelle? No. Do you see it, Commissioner? No, we see your, we see like your backdrop, your backdrop. So what you might want to do if you unshare, open up the PowerPoint and then share again and select the PowerPoint, that might be the way to do it. Okay. Yeah, stop sharing your screen. For some reason. I think I can stop it for you. So let me stop it for you. Okay. And then pull up your PowerPoint. Okay. And then go to share screen. And you should have a bunch of different options of things to share once you do that. Try to find the one with your PowerPoint on it. Well, we got again, we got your like background. That's interesting, Michelle, I think. Uh... Oh. You know what you could do, Dwayne, real quick is if you wanna email it to me, I can, I can open it up for you. That okay. might be an option. Well, I apologize. I had practiced on this and <laughs> it was going well. Um, you know, technology sometimes gets the best of us, Dwayne. Well, as I said, we'll get through it together. Okay. Well, I apologize to everyone. No problem. And Commissioner, while Dwayne's sending it to me, I don't know if you have maybe a filler. I feel like I'm, I'm um, hosting a TV show right now and I'm looking for someone to fill some time. <laughs> well, sh sure, uh, sure, Michelle. And um, folks, uh, maybe there's a, a question that you'd like to uh, offer to me. I, I'm happy to give you updates on, you know, there's a lot of stuff happening with the county, but I don't know if there are particular topics that you're interested to know about. Uh, maybe someone could pose a question and I, we could go from there or raise a hand. Good idea, Commissioner. And Dwayne, my last name's Bird, if you're looking for me. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Yep. Well, maybe I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say a few words if that helps. Although quiet is good as well. Uh, one thing I could share with folks that I think would be of interest is that, um, you know, we've been getting a lot of, uh, we've had a lot of work sessions in the last few weeks and, um, for example, yesterday, we had a very detailed uh, work session in the morning, a presentation from uh, Lori Hodges, who is the director of our Office of Emergency Management. And she was providing us with um, an update on the Cameron Peak, Cameron Peak Fire recovery and uh, provided us with a lot of details about where we're, where we're at in that process 
and what some of the costs will be to do everything from uh, you know, watershed pr protection to um, uh, debris removal and, and the issues of, of pub, you know, public lands and roadways and private lands and roadways. So that, that's an example of an update. And, and um, I don't know if folks have particular questions about that, but you know, we did get the disaster declaration from FEMA. This was back in January and that will allow us to access uh, FEMA dollars um, regarding what's called their public assistance program. Uh, we didn't get the declaration for their individual assistance program. And we, we, are, um, we did get what's called a small business administration declaration. And all of these things will allow us to access resources. And typically there's a cost share. And, um, uh, but we are making progress in, on that because there's a big concern about flooding and um, uh, uh, debris flows, especially when the, when the snows melt up in the high country. Uh, the last thing I'll say, because I see we have the, the slide presentation on, is that um, we, we also had two uh, community town hall meetings that Lori Hodges and her team hosted. Uh, all three commissioners participated. One was last Saturday and the one was on, I think it was on February, um, it was the, the Wednesday before. Uh, but basically there we had people from the National Weather Service as well as from Summit Stone Behavioral Health uh, and they had their Colorado Spirit program but, and, and, and other, other community partners. But that, that was really interesting to learn about the hydrology and, and weather forecasting and, and how we have things in place to try to you know, protect property and lives and uh, you know, help, our, help our environment. I'll stop there and again, if folks have more questions, I can get into, we can get into that later. Thank you. I hope that was a proper filler, Michelle and Dwayne. And I think you did a wonderful job, Commissioner. Yes. I'm gonna really quickly see, before Dwayne, you get going, I wanna make sure I can move the slides. Can everyone see me moving the slides? Yes. Am I going the wrong way though? There we go. All right, so Dwayne, you go ahead and just let me know when you need me to. Okay. And well, Duane, before you start, I just want to acknowledge a, a comment in the Q&A from Rebecca. Uh, I sat on, you know, on one of your interviews, congrats. I also serve on the Policy Council. That's good, yes, of course. On the Policy Council for Solid Waste on behalf of Wellington, I'd, like, I'd love to sit down and chat at some point on some of my concerns and considerations for Wellington. Please let me know if we can schedule that. So I wanted folks to be aware of that. Thanks, Rebecca. Uh, yes, thank, thank you, Commissioner, and thank you, Rebecca. Um, certainly can. Um, you know, it, uh, a part of my getting established um, and, and getting on board with everyone, it's important for me to reach out to the folks in Wellington, and I certainly will. So you will, you will hear from me. Um, uh, Michelle, if you go to the next slide, thank you. Um, so I, I'll dig right into the the landfill status update. We were able to meet with our consultant, HDR. They are putting our engineer design and operations plan together. And the comments, uh, we'll finalize the comments in the next two weeks and at the end of the month, the entire package will go to the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment for their review. And once, uh, once, once the CDPHE uh, gets the comments, we anticipate about two months for them to go through the information because it's been sharing back and forth and getting comments and, and things like that. And so we're looking forward to moving that process forward. Um, and, and the other thing that we are doing at the, at the facility is we are also looking at the site infrastructure, which, which would be the entrance um, where we are going to put the maintenance facility, the scales, um, the parking of the equipment and all those sorts of things. And those will be plotted on a set of plans and everyone will be able to see that once we finalize that. Presently, it's in the evaluation stage. Um, and so things are changing quite a bit back and forth as we work with uh, certainly the state on those types of things. And the work that has been completed to date, um, I, I did speak with uh, Lou and he had mentioned that he had gone through those details at the last meeting. So I won't 
put anybody through that again. Um, the second part of, of the uh, EDOP, once it is approved to, to the uh, county for review, and um, it would go through the certificate of designation for the commissioner's review and um, um, signing on off on the technical review. Hey, hey Dwayne, what does EDOP stand for? Uh, good, good question, Michelle. That's the Engineer Design and Operations Plan. And, and that's an extensive document that CDPHE uses uh, when they cite a facility. And within those documents are all the technical reports and, and all the operations data and all the compliance that will be required to do to operate the facility. Good question, thank you. And Michelle, if you go to the next slide, please. And maybe the next one, I, I kind of get, get ahead of myself and one more. Um, so that's a pretty good update on, on the uh, landfill. I, I, I know the routes, routing and um, the roads getting into the facility. Those are all important to everyone. And that is still in, in the evaluation stage. I know we're looking at everything really hard. And, and hopefully as we finish the EDOP, we'll be able to have some of those conversations internally with the county to make sure we're all on the same page. And so it is work ongoing. Um, that, that is pretty much for the landfill um, update at this time. Um, obviously, as things move forward towards midsummer, it will pick up. And, and I did want to say as part of that, um, I did meet uh, Cody from Wellington, and we had a pretty good conversation. And one of the things that was important is, is that we um, figure out our communications channel to make sure everyone in Wellington is being informed. And so that is on my list as, as I think most, most folks up in that area know Griselda was our communication specialist and, and she had some personal matters that she had to deal with in the family. So she is no longer with us. Um, so we're working on, on replacing her. And we do understand that that's an important, um, uh, communication is very important to everyone. Uh, so skipping on to the next, I, I would like to update on the infrastructure. The, uh, there, there are two projects currently that we're working towards in the, the transfer station, the central transfer station, which is located on the Larimer County landfill. Uh, we, we are evaluating uh, some design options right now, getting really close to the finalizing some of those options but we're, we are evaluating some, some design options that will help enhance the facility for long-term. The second project that we are working on is the uh, compost. We have a, co a consultant who's finished the preliminary evaluation of a compost facility, and we are working with them to study that data and evaluate what that would look like. And that pretty well takes me to the next piece, which I, I think my last slide should be the timeline, maybe one more, Michelle, thank you. Um, so our, our timeline for the central transfer station, um, 2022, that, that, is, um, that might move just a little bit because of our evaluating some of the uh, design options. The North Landfill, it looks like it's moving forward about as anticipated. The compost, um, that the composting, we were scheduled to be uh, moving a little bit quicker on that, but with some evaluations, it's taken a little bit longer. And so um, hopefully we'll be able to get some, an update on that on our next meeting. Construction and demolition, um, that is in the evaluation stage. That is always one to take a hard look at with certain types of demo. And we are evaluating that based on our waste characterization plan. And then the last part, the food waste composting, um, that will be a part of the compost, yard composting. And so that one is under 
uh, evaluations right now. And so I think that's about it, Commissioner. I hope I didn't take up too much time. No, I, I, it's, the time is not an issue. I think this is important to folks. Okay. And uh, Michelle, could you help us out? There are at least two questions in the Q&A. Uh, they both come from Zach Thode. i uh, wondering if you would respond to those questions, Dwayne. Sure. Absolutely. I have a few questions for you, Dwayne. And uh, the first one from Zach is, is there an option to use yard waste as animal feed? Compost is usually a carbon negative operation. That's a good question. Um, you know, I don't have the answer for that. Um, I think um, I'll write that one down, Jack, and, and I, I'll have to do some evaluations on that and get back and, with you if that's okay. Yeah, and, and that is important. I, I know that Zach has raised that issue before in some emails, and I think I've I've uh, shared that with Lori Kadrich, our community planning director. Um, and, I, I, and I think the idea is that, um, uh, and, and Zach, if you wanna you know, chime in, but the idea would be that um, you know, things like grass clippings and all of that, rather than direct in, directing them to the, uh, to the, um, uh, the proposed uh, uh, compost facility, that somehow there might be a way to get those directly to animals for, for feed. Uh, that's my understanding of what Zach is suggesting. Okay. But I'm sure there's a lot more to it. Yes. So Zach just threw in there, I think this is just a comment to go along with the discussion. I think that's a 50,000 tons of grass is equal to about 1,600 acres of corn. So that's just some, I, that's just a little fact that Zach threw in there. Interesting. Thanks, Zach. Good, good info. And then second question from Zach is about the CND um, process material. So Zach asks, can CND process material be used to generate electricity as a renewable resource? Um, you know, they're, they're, that's a good question, um, Zach. Thank you for that question. Um, taking CD to the next step, which is to, they're, they're, I'm going to answer your question in the long way. If, if uh, construction demolition, wood, um, different types of materials that um, can be made into pellets for one thing, or uh, you take it to the last step, which is carbon char, those are some of the evaluations that we're looking at with C and D. And so what we're doing right now is, is we've identified the construction and demolition types of material that we have coming into the landfill and, and with those materials, we will continue to take it to the next step, which is how much volume do we have to have? What, what is the process that we would use? And who are the end users for the material? And ultimately, you know, renewable energy is, is always important. And if there's a way to do it economically, then, then that's something that will be in our evaluation chain as we move forward with the CND. Thank you, Dwayne, for the answer. I am not seeing any other questions right now, and I don't have any hands raised. Commissioner Kafalis has his hand. Hey, thank you, Michelle. I, I wonder, Dwayne, if you could clarify a little bit more what your timeline means. For example, you um, on the yard waste composting, you have an uh, end. Uh, the right side of the arrow is June 2021 but I don't think we're gonna have yard waste composting operational by this June. Uh, so I would appreciate a clarification of what your timeline means, sir. Yes, yes. thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Um, yes, in, in working with our consultant, um, we, we are pretty well finished with the uh, uh, evaluation of the compost. And, and so the next step is internally to introduce it and, and begin to really evaluate what that means for location. And so I think the, the June was more of a, and, and I thank you for pointing that out. I think the end of June is to have the analyzing done mm -hmm. and figure out what we really can and can't do and then introduce it internally within the county to make sure that this is the direction that makes sense for us. And, and so, 
what I will do is I'll, I'll take that arrow and I'll clean that up so that it goes out to when would the facility actually be open? And so that will be, um, that's something that I need to do and put the arrow, when would the facility be open? And so good, good question, commissioner, thank you. Yeah, I think that would be helpful. I, I think in any future presentations of timelines, you know, you know, in terms of operationalizing something and then, you know, steps along the way to get us there as far as further analysis and, and that kind of thing, Dwayne. Yes. I believe there's another question from yeah, Zach. We did get another question from Zach. Hi, Zach. Um, Zach says, we have an unhealthy forest evidenced by fires. We need to manage some of these fuels so a large gasification system in Northern Larimer County could help with CND and forest products. I guess it's not really a question, just a statement, but I don't know if you have a response. Um, no, that, that is a, a good thought, Zach. I mean, gasification, um, you know, so if we look at the wood products, obviously that are uh, laying down trees that are falling brush and things like that, um, grinding that material up, what, what I think, Zach, to make sure I'm understanding it, you're proposing that we gasify that material and, and uh, create energy off, off that material. And, and I think that's something that definitely could be evaluated. Gasification is, um, it's, it's come a long ways as a technology. Um, I don't know that we could do that with that material. I, I would have to do more research, but I think it's a great question. Thank you, Dwayne, and thank you, Zach. And again, for what it's worth, um, I, I've been uh, asking uh, our solid waste folks and our community planning folks to really uh, push the envelope a little bit on these things and, and, and think outside the box. And I, I just want to remind folks that, um, you know, one of the underlying purposes of all of this is that our current landfill is set to expire, I think, by uh, what, I don't know what the latest estimates are. We, we're using different te techniques to extend it a little bit, but the current landfill is set to expire. And then of course, with the, all of the, 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 uh, the, the regional uh, solid waste master plan, the, the inherent goal is that we would uh, reduce or recycle, divert um, uh, solid waste by at least 40%. And, and so I know that uh, there are a lot of factors on, on, to achieve that goal. And I would hope that that 40% is a, is a minimal um, goal. And, and then, you know, it raises the issue about markets. Uh, you know, recycling markets are always pretty uh, volatile. And, and, and so I hope we're, and I think you are, including analysis of how do we create our own local markets? How do we, you know, some of the wood products that come out of the forest, you know, can we use any of that local, you know, regionally, et cetera. I just want to put that out there so folks know we're, uh, we're encouraging the, solid waste folks to think outside the box. We, we have to. Yes, thank you. I, I agree 100%. Um, I, I do like to think outside of the box. And, you know, um, uh, to Zach's point about renewable energy, those are things that are always on my mind too, Zach. So, you know, um, uh, we'll continue to, I, I have written your questions down and, and uh, we'll get some answers to you. And Dwayne, I can get you, Zach's been very engaged with the county. He's been on numerous boards. Um, I can get you Zach's contact information. Um, that would be good. Thank you, Michelle. You bet. Commissioner uh, and Dwayne, I don't see any other open questions or hands raised at this time. Well, then I think um, if there are no specific questions related to uh, this topic, we can, um, Dwayne, of course, you're welcome to hang out with us uh, as much as you like. I, I do want to let folks know that uh, at 10.30, uh, I will be picked up by uh, Lori Kadrich, our Community Planning Infrastructure Resources Director, and we're actually going to do um, uh, a ride-along where I, I, I asked her to show me all the potential routes for um, uh, um, a, a trash hauling trucks that would be uh, transferring solid waste from the, you know, the, the transfer station on uh, Trilby there and, and the west side of Fort Collins, you know, up to the new landfill. So we're going to be doing that. And I know we're going to meet up with Dwayne up at the landfill site. And I've also asked, I'd like to visit the uh, Wellington 
a convenience center to kind of visualize that and see how that how that works. So we are doing that uh, later this morning, and and I wanted folks to be aware of that. But otherwise, if there are no other questions on solid waste and uh, recycling, reducing, reusing, um, uh, then we can move on to other topics. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank, Thank you, Glenna. It's great to get to know you a little bit better. Yep. Thanks, Wayne. Here. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Well, so one thing I'll just say uh, to try to get the conversation going is regarding the update I provided a moment ago on the um, yesterday's presentation from Lori Hodges. Uh, you know, one a couple of the takeaways are that we, you know, we have a a, a better picture of what some of the costs are going to be to do the, um, uh, you know, hazardous tree removal, debris re removal, you know, supporting property owners and so forth. And, it, you know, based on the information we received yesterday, uh, there will likely be about a $1.5 million cost to the county. Um, and um, if you'll remember last fall, uh, the, 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 the board, we did appropriate $9.2 million uh, general fund dollars, general fund balance dollars, uh, you know, for our Cameron Peak recovery efforts. And six million of that is likely going to go towards um, uh, culverts and culvert upgrading and replacements. That's a, that's a big deal. And, and there are various cost sharing opportunities with FEMA and NRCS and so forth in terms of, um, you know, uh, mitigating or, or preventing soil erosion and potential mudslides and watershed protection and all of that. So I just want folks to know that we are moving forward with that. And um, if, if there are questions with that, I'm happy happy to answer them. Uh, beyond that, I, again, I'm, I'm open to what folks wanna talk about. So Commissioner, Steve has his hand raised. Ah, uh, yes, great. Hello, Steve. So let me, hold on, I'm struggling a little bit, Steve, all right. Um, Steve, just go ahead and unmute yourself. You know how to do this. Go ahead. Yes, thank you. Good morning, John. How are you doing this morning? Uh, hanging in there, Steve. Uh, good. I, good to hear from you. It's uh, it's good to be heard from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> John, I, I've got a question or two for you. And, and trust me when I say this, this is a, a sincere question. It's not a setup. It's not a yeah, I think you know me. I'm I'm a I'm a square shooter. I just I I, I really am, am sincere here. Um I've, I've got a, a constitution uh, in front of me, uh, as I know you do too. You keep it there, just like I do. And you know, John, when I when I look at, and I don't have to read the First Amendment. People know what it's like. But when we talk about the the freedoms of the you know religion and and uh, freedom of speech, uh, right to peaceful assembly, and grievances to the government, um, the the grievances of the government to redress. I obviously, as you well know, I. I sent a, a core request to the county and the state just asking for science justification to all the rules and mandates. And after I was ignored, basically all I got was it was it was definitely written by an attorney or a bureaucrat. It definitely wasn't written by a medical you know, professional. But anyway, that, that's not my, my point. My, my point is this. Um, for over a year now, we've had these rights and friends. We haven't been able to go to church. Uh, we can't go to, you know, a concert, a, a sporting event. We can't, we can't even, you know, we couldn't even get more than 10 people in our own home. And this constitution, as you know, is something that every elected official, including yourself up to, and especially the governor, took an oath, swore to an oath to uphold. Now, when I look at this, the, the First Amendment, and the whole constitution, nowhere, anywhere does it say that any of these rights can be dismissed, taken away, or a pause for any reason in any way, shape, or form. There have been disasters in the history of this country where uh, the, the government hasn't taken these actions to take all these people's civil liberties away. You know, there's tremendous amount of mental health and suicide and depression that have been totally ignored throughout this entire thing. And, uh, you know, this is another discussion, but I think we can, a lot of us agree that this has been more of a power and ego thing than a, than a science thing. Here, here's my question, John. Two, two questions, I guess. I, I'll lie to you. I fibbed. Can you tell me, have you feel honestly 100% and some of your colleagues too, this includes our governor, 
with 100% certainty say that you have absolutely abided by the oath that you swore to uphold the Constitution in its form completely? Second question, depends on how you answer the first one is, what should happen to elected officials and appointed bureaucrats of like the people with the health department do when they have not abided by the oath that they took to uphold the Constitution of the United States? Thank you, John. Commissioner, I think you're muted. Look, I, I don't want to dismiss your questions and I don't want to give you some kind of you know, politician's answer. Uh, you know, we all, when we get we sworn into office, we, we take an oath to uphold the Colorado and the, and the United States Constitution. Uh, I, I know that, um, you know, people, there are a lot of people out there that feel like, you know, the, the First Amendment, our First Amendment rights have been infringed upon, uh, freedom to worship and all of the others. Uh, freedom to assemble and, and so forth. And I, I get all that. Uh, but, you know, to answer your question, do you feel uh, that we've abided 100% by, uh, I, when you talk about the Constitution, I guess you're referring to both of them. Uh, I, I think we have. I mean, you know, we, we unprecedented times. I mean, we also have a responsibility to, um, uh, you know, to make sure that, you know, we're, we're doing what we can to, uh, protect public health, safety, and welfare. And, and, and uh, you know, this, it's, it's interesting that we have this, we're having this conversation, Steve, that because uh, tomorrow, March 5th, is the one year anniversary, uh, I suspect you know that, the one year anniversary that we had the first uh, COVID-19 case. And my understanding is that, you know, upwards to 6,000 people have died in the state of Colorado. And, and at, at this point, we, seems like we're turning the corner uh, on a number of things, you know, public health, metrics um, and, and also in terms of vaccination and we are you know we're so i'd say the answer to your first question is uh, i can only speak for myself and i and i and i do carry around the constitution and i feel like i've abided by the the constitution you know certainly within the context of this public health emergency that we've been dealing with for the past year and as far as consequences i i guess if i feel like um uh, I've been abiding by it, and I can only speak for myself. Then, then, then perhaps the you know, other than people getting angry at me, or uh, which happens sometimes, I I feel like I've I've done my best to do my job, uh, and I uphold the oath that I've taken, and also make sure that folks and are safe, and 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 also that we're doing our best to support businesses, uh, you know, to get through this. That's my answer. Not yeah, John. If I could just respond really quickly, I, I appreciate it, but. I, again, I think the meat of what I had asked about, you, you, you didn't say, you know, it doesn't say in the Constitution that in the middle of a public crisis that you can suspend our rights. It doesn't give you or any other elected official the power to take away people's civil liberties and rights for anything. It doesn't matter if it's a public. And I am not in any way, shape, or form belittling the importance of COVID. Don't get me wrong. I, my, I've got a science background. I know what's going on out there. I am not saying that. But I am more concerned about our civil liberties being taken from us. And you know, I don't know where the ACLU is. They're non-existent. They're useless in this because they haven't been around. But that's another whole issue. What, what happens in the next time? What happens the next time there's a public crisis? And we say, oh, we took away our rights this time. So I, I, I got to I got to totally 100% disagree with you that you abided by the Constitution when you said I can't go to church, I can't peacefully assemble because of a public health emergency. It doesn't say anything in the Constitution about any excuse for any person in this country to take away civil liberties and that's what happened to us I know there's a lot of people that feel like me that aren't saying anything and that's up to each their own. You know, a lot of people are afraid of getting, you know, called names and, you know, I say he's some right wing whack nut. I don't care. People can call me names. I could give a crap less. You know, it doesn't matter to me. I think if, if all you got is to call me a name, you got nothing, but it, it isn't it. It's about civil liberties and it doesn't matter about your ideological party, your beliefs, when your government can come in and tell you how many and who can be in your own home, I think everybody should be concerned about that. 
And it shouldn't be a partisan thing. It shouldn't be a political. It shouldn't be ideological. It should be what this country was founded on that people came to this. John, I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, lecturing you, but people escaped the uh, Great Britain because of the tyranny and the people's rights were taken away. That's why they came here and formed this and wrote this constitution. And I'll say the last thing, you know, cliche, people who ignore history are doomed to repeat it. And if we don't pay attention to what our government is doing and the civil liberties that we're losing, we're, we're gonna lose it. And I, I promise this is my last quote. You know, President Reagan always said that the total loss of freedom is, yet, is only one generation away. Thanks, John. Of course, Stephen. And if you want, you know, you and I can have this conversation offline. But I, I guess um, the last thing I'll say, if I may, is that, uh, you know, another, you know, in terms of the um, the right to worship and to go to church, if, um, a, as a one of Christian faith, um, uh, you know, it, also we we know we have the three branches of government: legislative, executive, and judicial. And there was. You know, people were concerned about that, and and I think you're right. If we if we don't express concern, um, if we've gone too far with this stuff, I mean, we we still have the ability to redress our grievances. And in the case of um, you know folks being able to worship and go to church, and how many people could assemble, uh, you know, in church, uh, there was a court case that basically said um, uh, it, it was uh, unconstitutional uh, to limit the number of folks. And and so as a result of that. You know, there there has been the ability for more people to assemble, you know, to be able to worship. So, in my view, our checks and balances are one way that you know we can try to put some uh, uh, accountability on and this whole thing. And and of course, the checks and balances don't always work the way I think um, you know our framers intended. So that's that's all I would offer. And sorry that I didn't answer your questions adequately, but I kind of suspect that I wouldn't. Uh, and I'm, again, I'm happy to continue the conversation, but. I'd like to get back to you know what other folks want to talk about. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Commissioner. So I'm looking here. I'm not seeing any questions right now. So this might be a good time to um, address any of the topics that you wanted to talk about today that maybe we haven't hit yet. Well, you know, I mentioned about the, you know, the Cameron Peak fire recovery efforts. You know, if, if we want to touch on COVID-19 and where we're at with that, um, I, I think there, there is a, a fair amount of good news uh, to share. And, um, you know, recently, uh, I mean, as far as, um, you know, vaccinations, for example, uh, it was Larimer County that, you know, one of the goals was to uh, uh, make sure that folks who are 70 plus years old uh, received the at least the first dose of the vaccination, 70% of those people. And actually, Larimer County achieved that last Friday, um, on the, I believe. And then the, the uh, state, um, they achieved the statewide goal of 70% of 70 plus folks. I believe it was on, on Sunday, which was the February 28th. And, and, and in my view, that's a very positive thing. And by achieving that statewide goal, it now allows um, Larimer County, for example, we're still in the uh, yellow uh, uh, level as far as the dial framework, but the 360 or so businesses that are certified or participating in the level up program uh, do have the option of, of going operating you know, in level blue. And, and we're also looking at some other things to try to support businesses because you know, when you say you can do increased capacity or have more people, in your business, you know that's constrained by, you know, what it, what are the the physical space that you actually have, and and businesses are still supposed to have physical distancing and all of that. But in my view, that's a positive thing that we're getting more people vaccinated. I think we're almost approaching 100,000 total in Larimer County as far as vaccinations. I actually, um, I'm in the 65 to 69 crowd, and. Um, uh, I actually received an email because I signed up on the county website back in February, February 7th, I think it was. And, and I received an email just the other day saying you could schedule an appointment. And I went out to the ranch yesterday at 3.30. I received the first dose of the, the Moderna uh, a vac a vaccine, vaccine. And my wife actually 
who's also in that age group. She went the night before to Poudre Valley Hospital and she received hers. So I think that if we wanna get back to you know, some semblance of normalcy, um, the, the vaccine is part of the, you know, the vaccinations are part of the equation, getting to that level of herd immunity. And, and I, I think uh, barring any, you know, any, any things uh, that, that um, might undermine the, you know, our progress, you know, I think we're looking at um, a, a summertime that's gonna be at least a lot different than last summer. And, and so I, th I think that's positive uh, news, good news. And that we, you know, there was a period where, where we didn't see any deaths. We've, I think in Larimer County, we're up to 224 deaths, uh, but there was a, a period there, the last number of days, I don't know if that's changed, where there have been no deaths. So I think everything we're doing on the public health side is, is, is helping to move us forward. And, and it's not to dismiss or diminish, you know, concerns expressed about freedoms and liberties. Um, uh, but we really need to get this thing over with and, and move on in our lives. So that, that's one update I would share. Um, uh, yeah, there are a couple of questions from Gail about vaccines. Do you wanna, do you wanna touch base on those now? I'll, I'll try, Michelle, with your help. Uh, yes, please, if you wanna you, tell us. Absolutely, so um, I'll just kind of lump the two together. So she says, Dan has not been notified to get his COVID shot and he's 77 years old. Gail finally got hers a week ago. How are organizations choosing people? And then she goes on to say she signed both of us up on four different sites, including Larimer County. Well, I think the recommendation that I would offer, and Michelle, you can help me with this, is that, um, uh, you know, and I've heard that from other folks, but uh, that, that they've signed up and they've still not heard, and they're in that 70, you know, 70 plus category. I think one recommendation is to, um, you know, there's our, um, that the phone number that we have 498, is it 5500? And, and, and there are folks staffing that. And if you call them and say, this is my situation, can you give me an update? Um, uh, why haven't I been called? I think that's probably, thank you. And, and that's, our, um, it, it, that's our joint information center that's related to COVID-19. Isn't that right, Michelle? Correct, yes. So that, yeah, I've, I've, you know, I've heard those kinds of concerns, and I, I think that's the best course of action. And then I don't know if that was Gail or or who offered that, but if um, if you're still not getting good information, please feel free to reach out to me or and or Michelle, and and we can certainly follow up. I, I can share a quick example with you. Um, I had been contacted by someone who um, her, her husband they they went for the, he went for his first dose. And this was a while ago, and apparently he's experienced some degree of dementia. And they were concerned about the experience they had at Poudre Valley Hospital, where they actually, you know, they had to go inside. There were a lot of people there. They felt that um, they had a, had to wait 45 minutes, and and uh, you know there wasn't exactly the proper um, distancing. And and so that was brought to my attention, and I reached out to Tom Gonzalez, and you know he worked with other folks and. We made sure that uh, you know the hospital was aware of that you know that concern, and I, it's been corrected. And in fact, the second dose, this uh, seventy-plus-year-old uh, older adult, uh, was scheduled for this past Tuesday. And I learned on Monday that they will have an option to go into a uh, the emergency department clinic where there will be less people. So they were very pleased, but happy to try to intervene where it makes sense and and be helpful. Thank you, Commissioner. It looks like Zach has a follow-up question regarding the COVID dashboard. Zach says, would it be possible to show on the COVID dashboard what the comparable historical influenza deaths are for Larimer County? It seems like 204 confirmed deaths with 94% over 65 out of the whole population isn't a pandemic. Certainly, um, I'll make note of that, and and I can ask. You know, it's interesting, Zach, that um, I think related to your question, uh, I, I there was a New York Times article. I don't know if I still have it, but it showed a bar graph, and it showed, um, uh, you know, because people have said compared to the um, uh, the influenza, the 1918 influenza pandemic, that we don't compare to that. But it shows that at least nationally. You know, uh, with over half, a, you know, five, uh, 
over half a million people who have died from this disease. You know, compared to other diseases, it's it's very significant. But you're asking, um, in terms of the 224 deaths, uh, the the high percentage of those folks being older folks, uh, is there a way to show that we can we can follow up on that, Zach? I don't, oh, hold on, one more question. Okay, Michael wants us to pass along to the health department that their partners that they need to do more than just sending an email reminder about appointments. My mom, 74 years old, missed her appointment because she does not normally use email and thus missed the reminder. My dad, 75 years old, got his vaccination because he received a phone call reminder in addition to the email reminder. Phone calls or text messages tend to be better way of reminding than email. And that was from Michael? That was from Michael, yes. Michael, let me pull and, it down. And I presume you have the contact information there, Michelle, since I do have contact information for everybody that, that signed up for today, Commissioner. Uh, Michael, yes, we can follow up. And, and your point is well taken that um, um, you're not everyone is... Uh, paying attention to their emails every every hour and and it's easy to miss that and i thought that there were some options i'm not quite sure why who was it that that missed their appointment because they didn't check the email was it uh, it was his mom okay so certainly we can we can follow up on that and 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 clarify what you know what level of consistency is there you know in terms of how we contact folks uh, I know in in my in the case of myself and my wife, um, it it was an email, and um, uh, and it wasn't a, a phone call or a text. But um, I will certainly follow up. Thank you, Commissioner. Is there an opportunity? I don't think we have any questions right now. For me to plug just a couple things that are happening with the county, really quickly. Yes, please. Um, the first one, and I'll put links to all of these things in the chat box, but I know I have no ability to do two things at once, so I'll talk about them and then I'll put in the, the links. First one is our Environmental Stewardship Awards. Um, we are accepting nominations right now for those through almost the end of March, March 28th. Um, so if you know someone who you think is deserving of a nomination, or maybe you yourself are deserving of a nomination, um, please nominate them for our Environmental Stewardship Awards. The second is our Workforce Development Center, um, Economic and Workforce Development Department is hosting some summer employment nights. It is a virtual event for youth. Um, so if you have a youth in your life that needs a summer job, um, one of them was already, we missed one, but there's a second one coming up on March 10th. I'll put the link to that information in the chat box as well. And then the final thing is that if you guys know any um, Larimer County residents that have small businesses that were impacted by the wildfires, um, we did get approval for um, loans from the Small Business Administration. And the deadline to apply for those that had property damage is April 26th. I'll put that link in the website. Um, and then the deadline to apply for economic injury from the wildfires is November 23rd. So I just wanted to throw those two things out there and I'll get links in the chat box after I look at what question. Oh, I'll, I'll read this question out to you, John, and then I'll go ahead and put those links in the, the chat box. Steve asked when we might get to return to in-person meetings. I can't say 100%, Steve, but I my hope is that we can return to in-person uh, meetings at the T-Bar or where folks want to meet um, uh, by the summertime. Thanks, Commissioner. I am and I'm monitoring both while I'm putting in links right now really quickly for folks. And I'll just say um, another thing that's important is that, uh, you know, we're continuing to make progress on on updating our land use code, um, phase two. And for example, last night, I listened uh, to an open house, our first open house regarding the oil and gas regulations. Uh, folks might uh, be 
reminded that uh, last year, I think it was in April, April 6, 2020, uh, the board uh, approved the uh, Larimer County oil and gas regs. And then of course, um, the state uh, finally adopted updated regulations um, in, in, in November and those took effect in January, I think it was 15th. And, and so we have the charge of updating our oil and gas regulations uh, to at least meet the, the standards that are in the state guidelines and, and requirements. So that process is underway and based on uh, community input, uh, we've, uh, we've decided that we haven't finalized this, but there's a, a proposed extended timeline. Uh, originally, we were looking at about a two and a half month uh, timeline uh, to update our oil and gas regs and, um, and adopt them. But now we've extended that by at least two months and we'll have more discussions about that next week with our, our planning folks. So that, you know, that's one thing that's really, really uh, important. And, and um, I wanted folks to be aware of that. And I think if you go to larimer.org backslash planning, and, and I'm sure Michelle will help do her magic to put that in the, um, in the chat, but, and then there's the, the link to oil and gas regs. You can, you can see the revised timeline and ways to engage um, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, part of the update of the land use code also includes our sign code. And that's getting to be interesting because there are some companies that are submitting sign applications and we are, uh, you know, we're, we need to update our sign, sign code regulations. But then there are other things related to affordable housing, uh, development standards, you know, variety of things. Um, and, and so people should be aware of that. The other thing I'll mention, and, and then I'll ask a question of folks, is that um, we've also been getting updates about our five-year <coughs> strategic plan. And, and as a reminder, uh, we have those three overarching goals, infrastructure, economic opportunity, and uh, how we provide services to folks. And in the last few weeks, we've gotten our, uh, what we call our quarterly updates. And, and within each of those goals there are specific objectives. So for example, in the um, infrastructure goal, you know, one of the objectives deals with um, our regional transportation. And so uh, you know, that's an important thing. Uh, for example, one of the issues that's come up uh, with Wellington folks is that there aren't many options for people who live in Wellington to come to work uh, you know, in Fort Collins or, or other parts of the region. And I know that there's been a lot of discussion about could we create some kind of a, a transit option, you know, uh, a bus service or something. So that would be part of the mix in terms of a, <clears throat> an updated regional transportation master plan. So that's an example of something that is in our um, strategic plan and also our broadband initiative and things of that nature. Also, you know, it deals with water and I know one thing that's of interest to folks like Zach or people who work the land is um, you know, making progress on how we can uh, implement um, uh, water sharing agreements. And, and, and that's gonna be something we need to work through with um, the people who have working farms and ranches. I, I would like to share, it just comes to mind uh, and that um, at our Tuesday meeting, administrative matters meeting, we did approve uh, uh, to allocate $150,000 from our open space uh, sales tax, Department of Natural Resources, uh, for a conservation easement, 73 acres north of Wellington, the Dixon Station. It's, um, it's land owned by the, um, uh, the uh, what is it called, the Poudre Valley uh, Cooperative Farms, and they do long-term leases. And, and so that's an example of, in, you know, of um, working with various partners to preserve, to put a conservation easement and to have that as a productive farmland. And, and Jodar Farms, which you know, raises animals and, 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 and for, um, uh, for sale, um, chickens and, and hogs and, and other things, I believe, uh, they're the ones who will, will be able to use that land you know, to continue their operations. So the strategic plan is really important and it also gets into affordable housing. It also gets into childcare. I think we recently, we had a, 
a survey out there, affordable housing survey, and I think the, the deadline for that was the end of February. Is that right, Michelle? Do you know? Yeah. But that sounds about right, Commissioner. Yes, thank you. The, the goal there was to get input from folks, and I think it'll help inform our uh, needs analysis that we're doing with a, a consulting group out of Denver, uh, Root Policy, um, and, and ultimately they're going to be providing us with a report in about next month or so, or this month, maybe the end of this month, in terms of what they've determined from uh, other kinds of focus groups and the survey results and everything else. And that will inform that, you know, what, what role the county has in continuing to help with the, the challenges of the lack of affordable housing. There's a Q&A there, Michelle. Should I take a deep breath and see what that Q&A is all about? Yeah, Zach says the budget tool on the affordable housing link didn't work. So Zach, do you mean the affordable housing survey that we did? Is that what you're referencing? Or Commissioner, do you know what he's referencing? I, I'm not sure. I suppose part of the answer to that would be when when he went on there, if it was within the month of February, it should have been working. And I don't yeah. know why it wouldn't have been. It's that housingimpactlab.com. I don't know if that's the site he went to. Uh, Larimer, that, you know, what was it? Larimer.housingimpactlab.com. Yeah, I would have to search for it, but I this is the first I had heard that the budget, there we go. And Zach, I think it's closed right now which is why it some of in in theory the the survey ended at the end of february so i'm not sure when you tried to submit the survey he said he tried a week ago i would just hmm. say zach and others if if we've missed the deadline for participating in this survey which i took and it's you know it's about 10 minutes it was very interactive it was very interesting uh, i certainly welcome uh, any input uh, that folks have, if they want to, if, if they have some, uh, you know, uh, uh, concerns or, you know, they, they, based on their experience, they have an understanding of what are some of the gaps and what are some of the proposed solutions for addressing those. I know, um, you know, uh, housing for agricultural workers is, is a big issue and, and uh, in, in the rural areas uh, and, and there are other things. And we are going to be looking at diversity of housing options, but that's the best I can offer, but I certainly welcome additional input. And uh, Zach, I'll reach out to um, our yeah. our contractors that did the survey and see. Um, I'll I'll ask them about the budget link, so I'll get back to you on that, Zach. So I guess to to close on the strategic plan thing, that, that's really important, and um, you know the other goal is services, and we're you know we're looking at. Um, you know, our facilities and we're looking at how we can be more creative with, you know, more people uh, working off site and, and we're saving county, do, you know, tax dollars because, um, uh, in, in, for example, in human services, the Department of Human Services, we were leasing a whole bunch of space out at Midpoint Drive and, and that's shifted. And, and that's an example of, um, you know, trying, I think, trying to be environmentally responsible because, you know, one of the issues with transportation it turns out that vehicle vehicle tra miles traveled is one of the biggest contributors to uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And that's another thing that we're starting to work on. And that is this uh, Climate Smart Larimer County framework. If, if people are interested in getting an update on that, that might be a, a topic we could do down the road at a, su at a subsequent meeting. But I'll, I'll stop there and just ask if there are other, other issues or topics that you would like us to address where I could invite or we can invite a featured guest. A uh, reminder that the next meeting is April 1, 7.30 to 9. It'll be Zoom, at least for the next few months. Uh, and we've invited Jacob Castillo uh, you know, to provide us with um, economic health data, et cetera. But if, there are, if people are interested in getting an update, for example, on the, uh, the Climate Smart Larimer County Framework Initiative, uh, we're, we're getting ready to put together an RFP uh, to bring on some consultants that can help with a, uh, a public involvement process, which is really important uh, to get the public involved and, and see what their thoughts are on these issues. Uh, but there are lots of other things that we could you know, bring people in to talk about. We'll give folks a chance to put stuff in there. 
there's a Q&A. Yeah, Zach says we need to spend considerable effort on water sharing. Farmers that usually rent a lot of water are being told that there isn't any available due to 2020 drought. There is, there are a number that will go bankrupt because of this. And I, is that one coming from Zach? Yep, correct. Yeah, I, I certainly appreciate his uh, informed involvement in all these things. And I appreciate um, his involvement as the chair of the, you know, the uh, one of our boards, uh, Ag Advisory Board. And I, I know we've got a meeting coming up uh, on March 10th, I believe, Zach. And, and I, I think we really need to look at uh, this water sharing issue really carefully and thoughtfully and figure out some tangible things, you know, to, to be able to move forward. I, so that's in, my, in response to, to what Zach raises. And I, I know it's incredibly important you know, how do we protect irrigated farmland and, and, and all of that. Um, we will have our DNR director, Dalen Figs, at the next uh, um, uh, Ag Advisory Board to help foster some of that communication and answer questions. I, I guess when this brings up one more thing, Michelle, if that's all right, and that is um, a, a really good way for folks to uh, advise us, the commissioners, the elected folks, and to participate in the and the work of the county is to um, consider, you know, joining a board and commission. And I'm reminded that um, we have uh, quite a number of openings because there's a bunch. There are a bunch of terms that expire June 30th. And there was an, a, a, new, um, a news release, I think it went out, that said, "Here are the openings. If you go to Larimer.org/backslash/boards and commissions, you can see all the boards and commissions where it says." applications being accepted, you can apply. And I believe the deadline is April 18th. And then after that, we will conduct interviews, we'll make selections uh, for people to start July 1st. Uh, but that's an example of um, a really good way to you know, get involved in county stuff. So I wanted, I wanted folks to be aware of that. Um, so I'm glad, I'm glad that sparked that reminder. Hey, Commissioner, we have a um, regarding the water issue that um, Zach brought up. He says, because of what Zach said and the growth, isn't that a good reason to build Blade? Uh, well, there's a lawsuit. I can't really speak to it. I'm sure that upsets you, Steve. And, and uh, uh, you know, certainly the, um, uh, the decision of the board at the time, uh, you know, the, the, the issue of Glade is that um, most of that water is going out of the out of Larimer County uh, and and one of the benefits to Larimer County uh, as discussed in the hearings is that the um, I think I can speak to this is the recreational value of, of establishing that reservoir but 90% uh, of the water is not going to be in Larimer County some of it will be with the Fort Collins Loveland, Loveland Water District and some other places so um, water storage is clearly a really important part of what we need to be doing. And, and I think that needs to be, that, that's gonna be part of our discussions because if you look at goal number one, infrastructure, and there are some really good presentations that we've gotten, in addition to what, looking at water sharing agreements, we're also looking at water quality and, and uh, um, you know, water quantity uh, and, and also wastewater and you know, floodplain issues and, and stormwater um, uh, issues as well. So that's my answer. Oh. So, so Steve had a comment and I'll read this out commissioner, but I don't know if we necessarily need to, to drag this on. Um, Steve says, I agree, but this water is for our fellow citizens. So um, with that commissioner, I am not seeing any other hands raised. I'm not seeing other questions. Um, Okay. We might be done for the morning. Yeah, I, I think so. And again, just to say thank you to Michelle, thanks to Dwayne Penny, and of course, thanks to all of you folks. I, I, I welcome any ideas on how we can make these more productive, more effective. Uh, I do look forward to seeing everyone in person. I'm looking forward to traveling up your neck of the woods in, in about an hour or so. And um, you know, I know the landfill is a big is a big deal and and the transportation corridors, and we definitely need to figure that out. And with this new director, I think that's I think he's going to be great, and I appreciate that Rebecca was part of the interview process and that she's on that Solid Waste Policy Council. Uh, with all, with all that said, I, I wish you well, and and um, you know please take care.
Thank you, Commissioner. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.